Today on YTV News, we learn about West Chicago's Monarch Initiative, we talk about the upcoming SAT test, and we talk to students about their dream vacations. And YTV starts now. Good afternoon, Wien Academy. I'm Tyre Abrams, and welcome to our seventh episode of the semester and our 31st of the year. To kick off today's show, Greta Gustafson reports on a new initiative in West Chicago in support of monarch butterfly preservation. On March 15th, West Chicago Mayor Ruben Pineda declared March 31st as Mayor's Monarch Pledge Day. The pledge is being made to reaffirm the Mayor's previous National Wildlife Federation pledge and to support the monarch butterflies this spring. With their brightly colored orange wings, monarch butterflies can be found across North America. These butterflies feed on nectar and are important to pollinating a variety of wild flowers. According to the National Wildlife Federation, the monarch population has decreased by about 90% since the 1990s. Because of this, Mayor Pineda wants the city to do whatever it can to help the monarch population, stating, we are committed to the monarchs and other pollinators in West Chicago. Since the original pledge taken in 2017, West Chicago has integrated the symbol of the monarch butterfly into its arts and culture to educate the community on its importance. In 2019, they celebrated the Year of the Butterfly through gathering local artists to create butterfly designs for parks and gardens. This year, West Chicago is committed to creating a habitat for monarch butterflies to thrive. So it encourages West Chicago residents to grow nectar-producing plants such as milkweed. These plants provide food and habitat for the monarch butterfly. Through growing these plants, the city hopes to take steps towards preserving the monarch population from further decline. Now that spring is here, warmer weather, blooming flowers, and butterflies are on their way. So whether you live in West Chicago or not, Mayor's Monarch Pledge Day encourages us all to be better stewards of God's creation during these spring months, even if it's just through small acts to help the butterflies. For TV News, I'm Greta Gustafson. Back to you at the desk. Thank you, Greta. As we see support for West Chicago wildlife, I took the time to catch up with Mr. Rivera about his work on West Chicago's District 33 school board. Mr. Rivera is known around the Wheaton Academy for many things. Soccer coach, Spanish teacher, and ping pong master. But I bet you didn't know that he was part of the District 33 school board. We talked to him last week to get some more information about why he's so passionate about education and about what he's hoping to accomplish by being in this position. About education, is like driving you to uh, serve in that capacity? I think that education um, as an instrument for learning and, and also acquiring knowledge, skills, values, morals, and belief and habits are, you know, are really, really important. And I'm very excited to be part of this uh, important role in, uh, in our society as a teacher. And like, what is, um, like, what are you hoping to like accomplish by, um, by being on the district board? Uh, by being at the board, um, my desire is for our students to succeed academically, develop strong values, and to be mentally and physically healthy. Just like, what are some of the challenges that you're facing, um, like in in the school system, like with COVID nineteen? We face um, was to make really the best decisions possible uh, with changing uh, with rapidly changing guidelines from the county, state, and the CDC officials. As Mr. Rivera is up for re-election to be back on the District 33 school board, the results won't be in until April 6th. Until then, it's important for us to show our support for how he is serving the West Chicago community. Spring break is nearly here, and summer only three months away. Brady Swanson talked to Wheaton Academy students about their classes for Wheaton for Summer Academy. I'm Brady Swanson, and I interviewed students on what summer school classes they want to take. Um, I'm probably looking forward to taking another art class this year. It's really fun. Um, so I didn't take summer school last year, but this year I plan on doing communications and history. I want to take those just to like kind of get it over with. We also asked students what summer school classes they have taken and would recommend. I took history freshman year and I kind of regretted it because I like history and then I didn't get to take it during the actual school year. 
Over summer school, I have taken communications. I took that last summer. And then I also took intro to uh, health my freshman year. And I would recommend taking, um, both were actually really nice to take over the summer, but I would especially recommend taking intro to health. Why do you recommend taking these classes? Um, my friends and I just decided to do it. It's a good way to like get introduced to your um, freshman class and make new friends before you start your freshman year. Um, and it was just a super fun and chill class to take. I took history and it was a good class to get out of the way. Uh, less homework for the semester. I hope this is helpful in finding a summer school class that you want to take. Brady Swanson, back to you at the desk. Thanks, Brady. For our weekly community scoop, I'll send it over to Mr. Thornton. Good afternoon, Wheaton Academy. Welcome to this week's edition of the Community Scoop. For this week's version, we're going to do a special college readiness traits Community Scoop where we take a look back and a look ahead through the lens of our six college readiness traits. First thing I want to spotlight is that we had some athletic teams last week display tremendous passion and perseverance with our boys' soccer and football teams on Thursday and Friday night coming up with big wins against state-ranked opponents. Proud of both of those teams. Well done. And uh, especially want to spotlight the perseverance on display on Friday night's football game. Down 23-0 in the third quarter to rally a comeback, 49 straight points, 43 of which were in the fourth quarter. Absolutely incredible display of perseverance. Uh, again, very proud of you guys. Uh, in terms of gratitude, I had the opportunity to be a part of the leading of the senior trip this past weekend. And I am not only grateful that we were able to go down and come back uh, safely, but also got to see gratitude on display from the seniors as many of them thanked and shared with their classmates. And it was a sweet time of community together. So it was cool to see that display of gratitude. Looking ahead a bit, um, in terms of social intelligence, we're at a point in the semester at the midway point where some of you need to get on top of your assignments for class. And the social intelligence piece of that is from a self-advocacy standpoint, you be the one to initiate any sort of communication that needs to happen with teachers. Uh, if you have missing assignments to make those up and you be the one to initiate that, don't wait on teachers to reach out to you. That's a key piece of social intelligence is knowing when to advocate and how to communicate, reaching out to teachers via on campus or email or just in face-to-face -face conversation. We are a few days away from spring break and from a self-control standpoint, I'd highly encourage you to finish these last few days strong. Uh, get the assignments done, get the studying done so that when you hit spring break next week, you can take a nice break and get ready for the home stretch for the final couple months before summer. And finally, the last college readiness trait is hope. And we mentioned it in chapel this morning, but we are in our Easter series and want to continue to remind you uh, that our ultimate hope is found in the person of Jesus Christ. And what a great opportunity that we have to celebrate in Holy Week and recognition of what he accomplished for us on the cross with his life, with his death, and his resurrection. He is our hope. I'm going to throw it back to the desk. Have a great day, Wheaton Academy. Thank you, Mr. Thornton. The SAT is next month, and it's important for students, especially juniors, to appropriately prepare for the test. Emma Vega takes a look at SAT study tips from Wheaton Academy faculty and students. As many of you may know, we have an SAT coming up on April 13th. For many high schoolers, this is a very important day because the scores on these tests help us apply for colleges in the future. I talked to Mrs. Kozlowski to give us more on how to prepare for the SAT. There are a lot of good resources online that kids can use. They can download practice tests off the um, internet through the College Board. And they also have a book. Um, that you can purchase online as well if you want a lot of practice tests. We also talked to National Merit Scholar, Senior Val Trudina, on a student's perspective on taking the SAT and how to prepare for the SAT. There are a lot of prep books that are available for the SAT. The one I use the most, which is fairly comprehensive, is the Barron's SAT prep book. And then there's also an app called Daily Practice for the SAT that just gives you one problem a day so you can work on math, reading, whatever it is that you're deficient in. Uh, my biggest tip for taking the SAT is when you're in it, just um, don't spend too much time on the hard questions. Just circle them and go back to them later. Now you have some helpful tips that you can use to prepare for the SAT. From TV News, I'm Emma Vega. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Emma. 
All this SAT prep can seem very stressful. Sometimes you could use a nice trip to get away from it all. Tegan Allison has more on students' dream vacations. As spring break is coming fast and many students will not have the opportunity to travel this upcoming week, I went around and asked students what their dream vacation is. Um, my dream vacation is to go backpacking across all seven continents, even Antarctica, and I know a lot of people hate on it, but I think it'd be really awesome. Um, my dream vacation would probably be going, be going to Alabama. It just sounds like fun. Probably be going to Oceanside, California to visit my grandparents, just because it's nice and warm and sunny there. Uh, I want to sail around the Caribbean and go to different places that Ernest Hemingway wrote about, and that's my dream vacation. Machu Picchu in Peru. About a one month vacation to Japan where I went to all the um, car sites there. I would love to go on a hunt in Alaska with my family featuring the bear and the moose. We look forward to a time where travel will be safer and easier so that maybe you will have a chance to go on your dream vacation. With Watt TV, I'm Tegan Allison. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Tegan. This past Saturday was the first official day of spring. And of course, with spring comes showers. Let's head over to our weather correspondent, Emma Vega, to give us more on this upcoming week. Thanks, Tyler. I'm Emma with your weather. Seniors, I hope you had a fun trip in Florida because welcome back to Chicago. We have a rain system in the Midwest that's coming to Chicago that's going to give us rain this entire week. We had a plane in Florida take off yesterday night hit Chicago, and so now you will see seniors also trickle in this entire week. Our five-day forecast for you, we have rain throughout this entire week, 90% chance of rain on Tuesday, going to a 50% chance of rain on Friday, and possible snow Friday morning. Our temperatures are also decreasing as we go throughout this week, 66, 66 degrees outside today, and 52 degrees outside Saturday. Go see that soccer game tonight because it is 66 degrees outside. 49 degrees was our average high. And last year it was a bit chilly, above 37 degrees. So, like I said, enjoy the weather outside. Wheaton Academy versus St. Francis is on Friday, so go see that football game. Thanks for watching the weather. Back to you, Tyler. Thanks, Emma. All that rain may dampen the playing fields this week, but it definitely won't touch the exciting gameplay we've seen from the boys' soccer this past week. Zach Gardner gives us more on how the team played. The boys' soccer varsity team has started off this season on a hot streak. Even with the pandemic, this team has competed against top teams in our 4-2-1, which includes a win against Aurora Central Catholic, three-time state champion Naperville North, Ridgewood, and Bishop McNamara. Unfortunately, they lost to West Chicago, Timothy Kishin, and managed to tie against Geneva High School. The team is led by Haitham Nassar, Robert Platt, Troy Erickson, the Mariotti Twins, and Evan Eckert, who all have multiple goals and assists this season. Declan Finnegan is their man in goal and has led this team, and in his varsity debut, played 80 minutes and got 7 saves, only letting 1 goal in. This week, the varsity team will be playing St. Edward and Elmwood Park, and over this weekend, they will play Westmont. From Watt TV News, this has been Zach Gardner with the Wheaton Academy Sport Team Highlight. Back to the desk. Thanks, Zach. It's hard to believe, but the summer sports are almost here. The practice is beginning April 5th. Along with the excitement from the players, the hype is building in preseason polls. Our boys lacrosse team recently learned that they were ranked ninth in the state in a highly respected poll. The writer says, quote, Wheaton Academy is a sleeping giant. They may have one of the best freshman classes in the state. Teams are refusing to add them to their schedule. Congrats, Lax guys. Go out and prove them right. The IT department, led by Mr. Vishnoff, is looking for a few qualified TAs that are interested in helping out for the next school year. If this could be you, stop by the IT office and talk to Mr. Vishnoff. As you heard last week, the seniors went to Florida from Friday to last night. They spent one day at Universal Theme Park while relaxing and building community during those other days. Assistant Principal Mr. Thornton spoke three times with them as well. Thanks to Mr. Holtrop and Ms. Spittler for helping to make this trip happen. Project Lead Local is having a book drive for the Scares Company. They take K-12 books and distribute them to local schools. Kitty pools are set up in the atrium for the next two weeks to put your books into. The drive goes through this Friday. Lastly, the boys football team kicked off with a resounding season win against Bishop Mack last week. Osa Rocco recaps the game's highlights. Last Friday, the football team faced a lot of firsts. First game of the season, first game with the new head coach, Coach Johannick, and the first time football had interfered with the senior trip. 
meaning many senior players opted out of the senior trip to play this game. The game was going like any other Bishop Mack game. Bishop Mack was ahead 23-0, but come the end of the third quarter, things started to change. Warriors' defense causes the fumble, which is recovered, allowing for the first touchdown by number 6, Trevor Donna. Then again in the fourth quarter, Trevor Donna scores another touchdown. Then number 70, Josh Friedland knocks down a pass that is caught by the Bishop Mack quarterback, then tackles the quarterback for a big loss. Number 3, Joe Bracey intercepts the ball. The relentless offensive line allows Trevor Donna yet another touchdown. Warriors defense causes and recovers a fumble to take possession. Number 9, David Dorn throws to freshman number 8, Liam White, for a touchdown. Number 10, Andrew LaPlante intercepts the ball, running it back for a pick 6. Joe Bracey intercepts another pass. Then David Dorn rushes for a touchdown, courtesy of the dominating offensive line. Liam White gets his first pick 6 of the season with an aggressive blocking of Waz defense. Then number 58 Eli Lazardo once again kicks the extra point to bring the final score to 23 points for Bishop Mack and 49 unanswered points for Wheaton Academy. A triumphant night of first for Wheaton Academy, including the first time beating Bishop McNamara in 11 years. What an incredible win. Congrats guys, and once again congrats to boys soccer as well for an incredible week. And now, for your four things you need to know, here's Lydia Daniel. Thanks, Tyler. I'm Lydia, and I'm here to give you your four things you need to know for the week. Number one, this week we have two birthdays. Mr. Dorden will be celebrating his on Thursday, March 25th, and our news director, Mr. Hockett, will celebrate his on Sunday. Number two, you heard from Mrs. Moon today in chapel, and for Thursday, we'll be hearing from Mr. Dykema. Number three, former WA athlete Jack Riken was recently named CCIW Diver of the Week for his excellence on the diving board. Jack won the honor despite it being his first diving competition ever. He took up diving three months prior and mastered five different dives over winter break. Jack was best known at Whedon Academy for his role on the golf team, as well as the kicker for the football team his senior year. And number four, don't come to school on Monday, April 5th. We don't have school since it's the day after Easter. Enjoy the extra day of spring break. Thanks, Lydia. That'll do it for this week's episode. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at TheRealWideTV. And of course, for all of us at Studio 22, have a good day and a great spring break.